Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another fun little land vehicle. We're once again looking at another forklift that can lift a variable amount of items. So this thing on my left and right hand side is called the Little Forky Mark II. Well, on the left hand side, this is it fully retracted and ready to be stored. But on my right hand side, this is it fully extended out and how high it can lift up items. Now the type of items it can lift up is very limiting due to how small it is and due to how light the vehicle actually is. It's quite difficult to move heavy things, especially small car containers full of a lot of goods. So my general rule of thumb with this vehicle is, if the engineer can move it by walking into it, then this vehicle can lift it up. Anyway, all the way over here, what we'll do is go through the F10 menu, have a quick look around the outside, drive around for a bit. The warp set up right behind me is a bunch of different objects, some of them filled up with a bunch of resources, some of them completely empty, and we're going to have a look at what it can and cannot lift up. So all the way over here, in fact, looking at like so, pressing F10 and finding the little forky Mark II in the spawn menu. This thing is 159 small blocks using the Heavy Industry Wasteland Automatons Decker Block Number 1 and Decker Block Number 3 DLC packs. We see it's got a tiny bit of information about it, such as it's a updated and redesigned version of the first incarnation of the little forky. It also features a connector directly underneath it so you can drive on top of a connection point and will load and load anything you want inside this and it has an event controller so when that connector is enabled it'll turn off a bunch of different things in order to save on a bit of power. So what we're going to do is give this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a good look around the outside and then we'll go from there. So my character can now bugger off just a little bit, there we go. And this is what we get at the very front for the little forky Mark II. So right in the very middle we got ourselves our industrial cockpit to drive this thing around with a bunch of spotlights along the top. Now these spotlights go all the way around the top of this vehicle and will flash quite a lot, which is why I've turned off. I'll turn it on in just a moment, in fact I'll do it right now, so grab and hold my character, bring him back over, getting inside, and then pressing number 6, here we go, putting the free camera back up, that is simply what it looks like. It is not too pleasant on the eyes, especially in the first person view, especially when you're up against some large object, it does become quite irritating. And to make it more obvious, what I'm going to do is put it now to night time, there we go, that is simply what it looks like. So going all the way like so, closing that, bring up the HUD and turning it off, there we are. I suppose my character can now stay inside this, we'll come back around to the very front once again, there we are. So yes, that light will blink quite violently and it's just intended to be a bit of extra flare to say you're working in it. Anyway, down below here we think there's some barred window blocks just covering the bottom of our cockpit, they have got a spotlight to light up the darkness and then some artificial mass just in case you want to use them. Up and onto the side, these are our lifting arms, our forklift arms to connect up to any kind of objects, lift it around, drag it around, and it's got two pistons right behind it. So moving onto the side, there's our first piston, there's our second one. They both move together via the click of a button. So in the concrete pressing one, they'll both extend out a little bit, pressing it again, and of course retracting it all like so. They come across on some steel blocks and fold all the way down in front of the pistons. Then they've got four magnetic plates connected on each of them in order to give you a big surface area connect up to. Moving across there's the side of our cockpits, there's a the side of lights along the top, and as we move all the way along we've got some fantastic use of our hands and skin just along the bottom above our wheel suspensions, then above that we've got some glorious yellow rounded steel blocks just cover up a bunch of our internals. Moving up slightly and coming around towards the very back, then we've got a couple of car containers for you to store a few bits and bobs inside, then around towards the very back there, once again some more hazard skin, once again some more spotlights, but this time acting as your brake lights, Moving all the way up, there's your gyroscope to help move this thing around with your mouse. Then there are some containers just connecting up to the front of the cockpit and all the way down to this back section. Pushing the camera all the way through, here we go, we're going to see a lot of artificial mass. There's our event controller, all the way down, past all of these. We'll eventually come down to our connector, which is sitting right here. We can now look around to see some batteries. And towards the back there, there's the back of our spotlights. And all the way down slightly more. There we go. Anyway, for the very bottom of this vehicle, there's all of our suspensions and how they've been connected up. There's some fantastic use of our armoured panels in a little pattern that we wouldn't normally see unless something's gone horribly wrong with this thing. So you lifted up something too high and it was too heavy, now you flipped it over. I suppose that's one way you'll actually see what's going on here. Anyway, that's that for the bottom. Moving all the way up and looking down this thing. All the way up to here, there we go. So there's the top of our cockpit. There's our little lights and how they've been clipped together. So we can clearly see them having a little bit of a problem with the textures is clipping into each other and jittering quite a lot. That's how it's been set up, and it goes all the way around. There's the top of our cockpit, there's the top of our lifting arms. And without further ado, I think it's time for me to grab hold my character and actually drive this thing around. So the controls are very self-explanatory, we've basically gone through all the major ones. 
where number one, number two is lifted up and down in incremental sections. The number three, number four, three magnet plates on the front, turn them on and off and then lock and unlock them. Five, same for your artificial mass, turn it on and off if you need it. Number six for your bleaking lights. Number seven, same for that spotlight at the very front below our concrete, turn it on and off if you want to do that. And then finally, number eight for your connector below the vehicle, so you can drive over a connector, press that, connect it up, and we'll do whatever with that. And with that, that's all the controls. So undo the park brake, first person view. What we're gonna do is now come over to this light steel block, and we're gonna lift it up. And what I am gonna do is turn off that front spotlight. There we go. I'm just gonna drive all the way up to it. Now we're just gonna clonk straight into it. Now we're gonna turn on our connectors. There we are, there's the sound of us connecting onto it. Third person view, pressing number one. And now we can easily lift up this single steel block. And once we're done with it, we actually let go of it, and it'll drop on the ground. Reverses this thing up, putting it all the way back down. There we go. We now turn around to the heavy armor steel block, sitting right next to it. Once again, just gonna clonk straight into it. There we are. Now we're gonna lift it all the way up. So like the light steel blocks, we've got no issues with this. We lift it all the way up to its maximum extension. And then of course, drop it down onto the ground. But now what if we were to lift up a bunch of them all clamped together? So right to the left of that, we've then got four light blocks, and then four heavy blocks. So we're gonna come over to the light blocks first of all, driving this thing all the way around. Then turning it like so. Dropping it down just a little bit more. There we are. Now going all the way up to it. Clamping onto it. And now, lifting it all the way up. And there we go, we can lift up a bunch of steel blocks, so we can use this to recover scraps. If you say your base got attacked by drones, or maybe you shot down a drone, shot down an enemy ship, and they want to take the scraps back to your grinding pits, you can use this vehicle to do so. So as per usual, dropping that onto the ground, reversing away, putting that all the way back down. Now let's come across to the heavy armor steel blocks in a massive clump. So actually putting it back down, hit the wrong button there. There we go. Turn this thing around. Now we're going to clamp onto it like so. Lifting it all the way up, and as you can see, this is a little bit too heavy for the vehicle to handle. So we're just going to tip all the way over. Not too much we can actually do about this, but I suppose if we were a bit careful and have it quite close to the ground so all of our wheels can sort of touch. So about that will do. We can still drive this thing around. We can still sort of use our gyroscopes to lift all the way up. There we go, that sort of worked like that. And we can just sort of move this thing around. So that's basically the limit of what we can move around with this thing. Anyway, disconnecting that, coming over to our large cargo container sitting right next to it. So over to there, bring this all the way down once again. Now we're going to drive all the way up to it. Going to turn off the artificial mass, our screen some flashing. And here we are, this is perfectly empty. So all the way up to it, clamping onto it if I can, might need to disconnect that and realign it. There we go. Now third person view, lifting it up. And there we are, we can lift up an empty large cargo container. Which one of us to start to fill this thing up it is not going to lift it whatsoever. Unless of course it's filled to the brim with Clan Cola. There we go, we now just drive this thing around and dump it wherever. I'm just going to turn it around, drop it like so, move away. And now we're going to come up to the small cargo containers. Putting it down and coming up to these, what I have done is filled up one of these with a bunch of resources. And one of these are completely empty. So the purple one's empty. The beans have done the large cargo container, we do not need to do that. So we're going to come up to the blue one. Here we go. Now we're going to try and lift this up. And like the heavy armor steel blocks, we are not going to be able to lift this thing up as a hop out of here and actually come inside to show you what's inside this. There we are, we've got 42,000.2 kobolds. And yes, this thing is not going to be able to lift this up, but you can sort of drag this thing around. So if you do need to move it with this vehicle, you can do that. And of course, if you want to play with your mouse, if you want to just constantly find this thing, you can drive it around sort of properly. So there we are, now just keep finding it and move it around. Disconnecting that, there we go. And then just suddenly blow up because of the sheer weight behind it. I'm kind of surprised it did blow up like that, considering how close it was to the ground. But hey who? Anyway, once again, putting that down, turning around. And I think what I'm going to do is now come up with one of these barrels. So we're going to come to this one, which is currently empty. So all the way up to it, clamping onto that, lifting it up. No problems whatsoever. So dropping it once again. I don't know why I keep hitting the artificial mass. I'm going to come across to the ones that are currently filled up with a bunch of resources. So once again, all the way up to it. Clamping into it, lifting it up, and yes, once again, this is not going to work too well. And as you saw when we actually had it all the way down, so here we come, the vehicle itself will lift all the way up. There we are. That's a novel way of storing it up on a wall. Once again, disconnecting that, 
and reversing away from it if I can. Maybe I can, maybe I cannot. I'm not too sure what's happened there. There we are. We're now going to come up to a couple of vehicle examples, and then I'll end it there. So turning around, it can be over to the good old Dex Fighter, who's had a bit of an accident. It's lost all power. A few of the thrusters have fallen off. So all the way up to it. There we are with it clamped up on one side, lifting it up. Will this work? No, it will not. But like the other heavy stuff, we can still drive this thing around, we can still drag it around. And with enough fighting with the gyroscope, we can sort of tilt this back and minimize the amount of damage we're dealing to the poor little ship. So there we are, disconnecting that once again, lowering them down. They finally come across this small little land vehicle. So all the way out to it, putting it all the way down to the ground. This land vehicle has lost all of its wheels. I'm not too sure what happened to the engineer just then. He sort of got trampled a bit. Now we are fully connected up onto that. I need to disconnect that, make sure the other arm is on. There we are. Third person view, lifting it up. And there we are. To my surprise, we're not tipping over. And we can drive this thing around. Oh, there we are. That is now starting to tip over. But once again, fighting the gyroscope, we can move this thing around and get it where it needs to go. Say we want to repair it up and attach onto wheels, weld it up manually. We now just hop out of that and actually do that. Now we just say do that, blah, 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 blah. Or maybe drag it over to the grinding pit and then just drop it off. And there we are. That's what the little Forky Mark II has to offer. It's just a fun little thing that some people might enjoy playing around in their world. So it's just a fun little vehicle to use and can prove quite useful if you do have a large base. You do have a lot of stuff that needs to be moved around, which is not attached on grids. So I suppose one last thing to do is to try this thing around. So here we go. This is as fast as it can go. 8 meters per second. Doing a sharp turn. As you expect from a vehicle with a bunch of wheels on it. We do basically full 360 in a very short area. And it's not going to be going too fast. It's not going to be crashing into anything. It's just a perfect little workhorse. So to finish off this video, what I'm going to do now is find the wheels. Here we go. And I'm going to remove the speed limits. There we are. And I'm going to give it a nice bit of power. And off we go to drive it to destruction. So we're now creeping up to about 25 meters per second. It does not look like the LCD screens are doing too well there. We do have our artificial mass turned off. Here we are now at 45, 46, 47, 50. And we're slowly creeping up. It looks like we might be wibbling and wobbling a bit. I'm starting to lose a bit of control over this, but it's bloody impressive. This driving around at 65 meters per second and still behaving quite well. The wheels are not too happy. We're starting to bounce. It looks like 65 is about the limit this thing can drive, which is still bloody good stuff you need to escape from a drone that's currently harassing your base or maybe tearing your base apart and you don't have any kind of defense. But this is like, it might be it. No, it is not, but that will definitely be it. And... There we are, that's it. The little Forky Mark II. So like I said, it's a fun little vehicle to use in your world. It's a handy little vehicle to have around. Now we need to description below to start and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.